Gordon, how beneficial will this fixture be? This one? Um, I think the training session, I think we're, 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 we're counting the, um, the game and the build-up to the game against Qatar as a, a real training session to get boys up to speed. When we get to the dressing room um, at Easter Road, it turns into a real game. Um, so we'll be picking a team that reflects probably the number of games I've had over the last six weeks, seven weeks. Um, and then when we get there, what, I, what I've not got a problem with is the intensity that the players will play with. Um, again, the training says that. There's no crowd out there. Uh, but the intensity of training and the, the professionalism is absolutely first class. Um, I thought I might have had a few call-offs, lads, saying there'd be a bit more extra time with their wives and family because it's a, it's a hard game, this. But we've not had that. Only Alan, who played in the cup final on Saturday, is taking an extra bit of break, but that's, that's understandable. And um, so I have a lot of players to choose from. I didn't think I'd, I'd have as much, but I have because of the enthusiasm. So that's great. Um, but, you know, Qatar, um, the last three games have been excellent, you know. Um, won two and drawn one, and only lost one, one goal. Um, and we'll watch videos of them, and they're a strong side. Is it a difficult balance then, given the amount of players you have at your disposal, to make sure players that need a game get a game and keeping the others involved? It is, and I've been walking around the, uh, the training ground and hotel asking players if they, they need to give this a miss because there's a big game coming up, and it's a resounding no, I don't need to give it a miss. So I've, I've got the problems in. Try to keep them all happy. Um, we'll try and do that as close as we can to keep the whole squad happy. It's nearly impossible. But at mo this moment in time, they're happy, they're comfortable with each other. The training's been good, but every player wants to play the game. Are you preparing mainly, though, for Republic of Ireland while trying to fit in this? Preparing the fitness, look, more than anything else. I think we, um, we, we usually tend to work in the same pattern, attacking-wise. Defender, defensively, um, but there's always a, there might be a wee twist on something that we might want to do that's a bit different, but nothing cosmic. Gordon, how close do you think you are in terms of knowing your starting eleven for the Republic of Ireland match? Um, there's things that come that you can't uh, um, get ready for. It's a, the fact that somebody might get injured, a couple might get injured, so it's very hard then to say oh, that's got to be my team. Um, I just know it's going to be an intense game. You need to be fit to play in this game. And um, you need to have experience to play in this game. And you need to definitely relish playing this game. Uh, the last the last bit, the relish, and I've not got a problem with that. Everybody wants it. Everybody wants to play. Um, if you're asking me, uh, am I near the team? I'm not too far away. But again, well, I've also said when we come to this training together, that somebody can blow me away with a performance and sometimes the manager think it's right for him today's the, tonight's the night or whatever that sounds like a song doesn't it mm. yeah um it, it could be the time for that one sometimes you just have to sniff something at training see charlie adam back in the squad a few other new faces uh, or returning faces yeah i think, I think charlie's the only one i think the rest have been here for a long time but my squad's uh, based on about 20 players that usually turn up here then uh, some others after that. Are there any particular players who will play tomorrow that you're particularly keen to see them in action in Scotland, Chef? Uh, no, really. They've, uh, the two training sessions we've had, both the coaches have all walked off and went, isn't it great to watch good players and good professionals training? And um, it's a wonderful thing seeing that. And the players have been fantastic. Not just the way you can get players who can run about and show great enthusiasm, but they show the ability they do. Um, it's been great for me. So I don't think, I'm just looking for a continuation of the training um, intensity and, 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 and play. If I get that against Qatar, then fine. Given the importance of the game next weekend against the Republic of Ireland, would you expect some of the players to be a bit more cautious against Qatar tomorrow night? Um, they'll, they'll go out there, but totally professional, but I think like, like everybody, when a friendly, if there's there's a tackle you might have to go on and you think this could be you know, a problem, then you might have a problem, I can't tell you. I didn't like friendlies as a player. Didn't like them. I don't like them as a manager. Um, well, you say I don't like them as a manager, mostly as a player. Um, I didn't like them. I didn't think there, was, there wasn't an edge to them. And uh, 
we've got to make that edge tomorrow. But it's only common sense that if you see something coming that might, you know, add a radar in me that I could sniff a tackle a mile away. Uh, I just hope the players have got the same radar. In a sense, this game tomorrow night is a kind of an extension of your training. Is that, exactly, that's what it is. Um, we're trained twice today. You would normally not do that before an international game, but I feel like I can't treat it as a normal international game with points at stake. I've got to treat it as these guys have been off some of them for four weeks. You know, I've got to treat it as an extension of the training. The training has been extensive, and the training has involved a lot of coaching within um, a full size pitch, 11 v 11, to make sure they get we're just topping up the, the reminders of what we do right and the fact that they, they can get a game at the same time on a big pitch. I mean, you mentioned some of the boys have been off for four weeks. I mean, how did you find their physical condition as a group at the start? Of the fantastic. Fantastic. As I say, I'm, I don't need GPS to see where they've ran. I don't need heart monitors. I can tell my eye who, who's fit. Because I'm sometimes hard running watching it as character building. So they've got that and the, the, the fitness level is... It's good. Okay, you, you have the fitness level is, is fine, but you need a match fitness, and that's what we've been trying to do with the trainers to get them to match fitness. And again, the Qatar game will be bringing you up to match fitness. Quite a difficult balance trying to manage the players' fitness at this stage of season, especially given the, the broad range of time off. Yeah, but they're so professional now. They look after themselves so well. Um, and I, I, I see a difference from two years ago in the Croatia. I, I think the fitness level, and saying that we won the game in Croatia, I think the fitness levels are higher than they were uh, two years ago. Obviously, it's a, it's a problem trying to deal with that, that fitness issue, but I suppose it'll be the same for Ireland. A number of their guys who have played championship have finished at the start of May. Yeah, but the, I think Ireland, if you look at it, there's more of them that play in the Premier League than ours, I think. Um, so they played up to the 24th. You know, and that's why I was asking the lads who who played up to the 24th, who pl regularly played up to the 24th, because some guys might be in a team that plays the 24th, but no play to the 24th. The last game may have been five or six weeks ago. And I asked them if they wanted a break, and none of them wanted a break. In terms of the importance next week, obviously, it's, it's such an important game, such a huge game for, for Scotland. But it's an exciting game, isn't it? It really is. The guys are going to be nervous about that. Mm, no, they're not nervous. They're not nervous. I think you get excited. There's an excitement and adrenaline. It's a, it's like anybody in top sport. You know, if you ask boxers, I don't think they're nervous. They're excited. They want to get on, and um, that you need that. When you say you make near the the game just before you might be a wee bit nervous. That adds as well. That adds to your your focus. What do you make of their preparation, Gordon? They're obviously playing <coughs> England, which will no doubt be a yeah. interesting match to say the least, and very different, I suppose. Uh, Ireland playing England is suppose very different from Scotland playing Qatar. Different kinds. Yeah, of there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What What do you make of their preparation, the Irish? Um, I don't. I don't know. You'd need to ask them what the preparation is like. But obviously, I know that when you play against England, nobody wants to beat them. <laughs> That's an added edge to it. Um, but we had a, a, a listed two or three teams we could play against, and this is the game we picked, and, and we're delighted that we we have a game. Um, but I say that's. Um, the game itself will be an extension of the training this week. We heard Mark McGee yesterday saying maybe the players against Qatar won't give everything. Um, is that quite difficult? Oh, I think they'll give everything in terms of actual physical ability. Um, what Mark's saying is maybe if there's, a, if there's a headed thing that you're going into where you've seen a couple of challenges in the championship playoffs, I, say, I don't think that'll happen. You know, I, I really don't want to see people clamping into each other. Um, that kind of thing. I think you have to be sensible, sensible. But when you let players go and uh, enjoy the game, then you never know. They'll, they'll go for things. I can I don't think I can actually say to Scott Brown, don't tackle somebody and these kind of people. And you know, I just I don't see that. But there might be moments in the game we think that's no worthwhile going for that that tackle. Obviously, the Republic of Ireland game is going to be pivotal, Gordon. But at this moment in time, just... Do we know it's going to be pivotal? It feels like that. Maybe yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. There's a difference between feeling like that and being like that. I think what we've, I think what we've said since the um, the second game against George, this is a big game. Next one, this is a big game. This is a huge game, the next one. Um, you never know. At this moment in time, you do not know what points tally will take you to France. You don't know where the big game's coming. What you have to try and do as a manager is make sure that your team performs and you can look back at the end of the, the, the campaign and go, that was a big game. You know, 
You never know when it's coming. But what you can do is, is make sure that it might be the big game. So if, if it might be the big game, you've got to perform to make sure if it's a big game, then you've performed in the big game. You said it's exciting for the players. What about for the manager and the coaching staff? We're the same. We're the same. We get the buzz from this. Yeah. People asking about the game. People want tickets for the game. Um, watching players preparing for the game. Uh, so all that is because sometimes if you, I remember playing in June years ago with Scotland, and you, you really think, oh, I, I like the game. I like the ninety minutes, but I don't. I, I really can't go the training and bus journeys and planes. Um, but the players are enjoying the whole thing around this game. Uh, and because of our performances up to now, we are in a position now we can enjoy this game. If our performances weren't right, then this could have been a drag for everybody. Everybody who wants Scotland to do well and yourselves, this could have been a drag. Going back to Easter Road, are you looking forward to going to Easter Road? Yeah, this time I don't need to skip to get in over the turnstiles. I think I'll be able to get in, no problem. Is your mum going to the game? I think she is. I think it could be the fourth game she's ever seen. You ever got to play for Hubs? Does this? I did actually. I played in the testimonial. Yeah. And I scored. And Ron Atkinson didn't speak, speak to me for two days. He was going to Coventry. Is this in some way, you know, perhaps equal that? Is, this, is that an experience that's going out there? Uh, listen, it's, it's, it's fantastic. I can go back um, um, for where I started watching football as a Scotland manager. I've been through the whole whole thing, player, captain. To go back there as, as, as manager, it's a, it's a right, it's a proud time being a, the, the manager, but going back there is it's fantastic. And I'm, I'm sure a few of my relatives will be going to the game. Just to jump back to player fitness, um, I understand Stephen Fletcher left training early today. Is there any concerns? With ah, I've got a new one for you. Two, two left early. Yeah, so that's not as big an exclusive as you thought it was. <laughs> There's two left. You missed out another one. Are there any fitness concerns over players like Stephen Fletcher? Yeah, the second one that left today. No, the two of them uh, just got bumps. And uh, I, I really, at this moment in time, I don't know if they've got to go out this afternoon. Um, but what I'm hearing, they'll be fine for tomorrow. But if there's any, any problems with them. The other one was Andy Robertson, by the way. If you, your lads were away, the cameramen were away too, too early for that one. Um, so that was the other one. But uh, they're, they're, they're quite positive when I see them. They're walking fine. Gordon, uh, sorry, um, I know Daryl asked, um, that you respectfully asked us um, not to talk about non-football issues, but I wonder if that might extend to FIFA, just for our BBC News colleagues, Gordon. Um, I wonder what your personal views might be on the current... Well, I, I think, I think see, people always use, use the, the statement of footballers are role models. Am I correct, yeah? It's because it's, it's no rugby players, it's no tennis players, it's always football players. Um, same can be said about the executives who run the game. They should be role models as well. When we get role models in place, then football will be a better place. So uh, for me, that's the same thing as being a, a footballer. If we've got to use footballers as role models, we must have our executives to be role models as well. We can now move on and only concentrate about football, which would be great for the game, because without doubt, this is the greatest game in the world. And anybody else that tries to tell you otherwise, they're wrong. This is the greatest game in the world.